Well, let's see. For me, this means g of g of 0. So first I find g of 0 by putting in 0 for x in the g function, 0 and 0, 1. So I see 1. So I take the 1 and use it as input back into g. And in this case, I would see 2 times 1 squared plus 1 plus 1. So it's 2, 3, 4. So it equals 4. And in fact, what you can do now is actually compute the functions in general. Instead of actually particular values, we can do the following. For example, what would f composed with g of x actually be? Well, now we see a pattern. It's f of g of x. So what does that mean? Well, I'll put g of x right here. Well, here's g of x, so I'm just going to write that out. So if I write that out, what would I see? I would see f of, and in place of g of x, I'm going to write 2x squared plus x plus 1. Now what do I do? Well, now I want to find f of all that. And we've got to be careful here. Remember what this means. Wherever I see an x in the f function, I'm going to replace it by this whole big mess. So in fact, this would equal 3 times that whole big mess minus 1. Because wherever I see an x, I'm going to plug in all this gobbledygook. So I see 3 times gobbledygook minus 1. So that's going to be 3 times the quantity, 2x squared plus x plus 1, and I subtract 1. Notice that's exactly, look at this right here, and notice that's exactly this function where I replaced the x by 2x squared plus x plus 1. You see how I did that? 3 times blah, blah, minus 1. And now you can actually write this as 6x squared plus 3x plus 2. I just distributed that 3, and I got the answer. So that is f composed with g of x. And look how I did it. I, the g came first, and then I took that answer and put it in for f. Let's do one last one. Let's figure out what g composed with f is and compare those two. So if I do that, let's see what happens. So we just did uh, f composed with g. Let's do g composed with f. What does that mean? Well, that means that g is on the outside, and first I do f. So what is f of x? Well, f of x is 3x minus 1. So I put that in right here. Great. And now what do I do? Now I go to the g function, and wherever I see an x, I'm going to replace it by all this gobbledygook. So I'm going to see 2 times gobbledygook squared plus gobbledygook plus 1. So that's 2 times the quantity gobbledygook squared plus gobbledygook plus 1. Notice if you look at that, that's exactly the same thing philosophically as g. But wherever I see an x, I just replaced it by this gobbledygook. So 2, 2, something squared, something squared, plus the something, plus 1. And now I can actually just simplify that out. So it'll be 2 times, if I square that out, I'll get 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. Did that really fast. Plus 3x, and then I have a minus 1, plus 1. If they drop out, I just get 0. And if I distribute the 2, I'd see 18x squared. Here I'd see a minus 12x. Minus 12x plus 3x is minus 9x. And then don't forget to distribute the 2 everywhere. I get a plus 2. So this equals g composed with f of x. And look at the difference when we did this problem. Well, it's the same thing. This was, ooh, it's sort of psychedelic with all these things here. But if you look here, this was f composed with g. And we saw that there, we got this answer. But g composed with f, we got a completely different answer. So you can see these two things aren't the same always. In fact, you can get different kinds of functions, and they're sort of uh, unrelated. They sort of maybe look a little the same, but they're really not. They're completely different. And you have to be very careful with the order. If I write f composed with g of x, that means first take x, plug it into g, take that answer, plug it into f. You sort of work from the inside out. Just like in this example here, here I first take x, plug it into f, the inside, and then plug that into g. That's what we saw right here. So that's composition of functions, something that actually we didn't even have with numbers. It's a new way of combining functions together and to build new functions.